Hello bookish friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Lois, this is Lo Chan Reads and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the five books that I have read this month with Autism Rep. I hope you all had a lovely Easter but in any case today I'm here to talk to you about some of the books that I've been reading in April which in case you didn't realize is World Autism Acceptance or Awareness Month. So I thought it would be a really great idea to read diversely this month in terms of seeking out books that were written by autistic authors about autistic main characters because there is still a lot of ignorance and misinformation to do with the condition today. And with that said, I have five really great books that I'm really excited to share with you. The books that I'm going to discuss with you today all vary greatly from one another. So we have some that are targeted towards more younger readers, some that are targeted towards more mature readers, some are memoirs, some are erotic fiction novels. But a couple of things that I can say that I've definitely learnt collectively from reading all of these books that I'm going to share with you is the spectral nature of autism. Autism is very much a spectrum, hence the acronym ASD or as I prefer it ASC, Autism Spectrum Condition. There is not one way to be autistic, it manifests itself in several different ways in terms of how people communicate and interact with the world and with others, how they process information. It varies from person to person and that was something that I really appreciated from each one of these narratives, how each uh, protagonist experienced the world in a different way. And the other thing that collectively I really appreciated from reading all these books is just how much masking and how much autistic people have to mould themselves to assimilate into a world that was built for neurotypical people. The onus really is on autistic people to mask and assimilate into neurotypical spaces rather than teaching ignorant neurotypical such as myself about neurological difference and that's why today there's still such a disconnect between what most people believe autism to be and what it actually is. So reading these five books it has been a very eye-opening experience for me and I'm going to stop rambling and I'm just going to jump in to the books. The first book is Earthlings by Sayaka Murata who also wrote one of my favourite books Convenience Store Woman. This is translated fiction, it was translated from the original Japanese by Jinny Taplei Takemori and we follow the main character Natsuki who is neurodivergent and because of it um, she's misunderstood by literally everyone around her except for her cousin. She faces a lot of mistreatment and abuse from her parents and her teachers and as a coping mechanism she creates these narratives in her mind about her and her cousin being aliens waiting to be taken back to the original planet that they came from and this connection that she has with her cousin it lasts into adulthood when she's now living in an asexual marriage that's as much plot as I'm going to give you but I think with this book a lot of people will misunderstand it because it's very overwhelming and disorienting I remember when I first read it, I was very much overwhelmed by this book, but when I read it again in preparation for this video, I was able to appreciate a lot of things that I hadn't prior. I do really appreciate and applaud the originality and the unconventionality in this book. Even though it is quite triggering and it does take a very dark shift towards the end so uh, do your research before reading this book and also I thought it was very nuanced in the way that it discusses certain societal issues as well so it does get a very strong recommendation from me. I did thoroughly enjoy this book the second time I read it but it is quite triggering so just bear that in mind. Next is The Electricity of Every Living Thing by Catherine May which is a memoir and we follow the writer Catherine May who is a 38 year old woman who was diagnosed with autism quite late in life into her adulthood and she talks about in her memoir how this diagnosis put certain experiences in her life such as the challenges that she's faced in her marriage and in other spaces into perspective and also the difficulties that she has with human touch as well and throughout all these challenges her main coping mechanism has been 
through walking. So she basically decides that before she turns 40, she's gonna go on a hike of the entire Southwest English coast. And this memoir is essentially her doing just that. As you would expect, this memoir is written with a lot of picturesque, atmospheric language, and I absolutely loved reading it. It really did set the scene for me, and it just kind of reminded me of when I went to visit Sussex, which is an incredibly beautiful part of England with some amazing scenery, and it reminded me of when I went hiking in certain parts of, of Sussex, so I loved reading that. But I feel like overall, this memoir was told with a lot of eye-opening honesty and vulnerability, and and I love the way it challenges uh, people's misconceptions surrounding autism and the, the stereotypes that are very much attached to autism. Catherine May speaks about when she was sharing her diagnosis with other people, how it was very hard for them to match her with the image of autism they had in their minds. In that sense, I feel like this memoir does a really good job of challenging uh, neurotypical ignorance concerning autism today and on that basis I really want more people to read this memoir. The next book is On the Edge of Gone by Corinne Duvis which is a young adult apocalyptic science fiction novel and it's set in the Netherlands in the year 2034. We follow the main character Denise who is both black and autistic and it's within this setting that a comet has struck Earth, it's destroyed most of Europe and other parts of the world. But luckily Denise and her mother, they have managed to find shelter on this generation spaceship that is bound for space. However, Denise and her mother are told that they have to leave the ship because they're not permanent passengers. So Denise now is trying everything in her power to convince the captain to let herself and her mother stay on the ship and also allow her sister who is trans to become a passenger. The main thing that I enjoyed about this novel was the action. It's very plot driven. There's a lot of action scenes. There's a lot happening. It has a lot of momentum. I enjoyed the fast paced nature of it. Plus it has a very diverse set of characters in this novel from different backgrounds and different sexual orientations. And even though Corinne Duvis is white, I think she does a really good job of using this narrative to help the reader understand what life is like for Denise, our main character, existing on the intersections of both neurodivergent and racial bias. Next, we have one of my favorites on this list, and that is A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol, which is juvenile fiction novel. It's targeted towards more so pre-teen readers. I imagine in America, you'd call it middle grade, but that's what we have. We have um, this story, which is set in a small town in Scotland, and we follow the main protagonist, Adeline, although she prefers to be called Addy. And it's about her learning about witches at school and the women that were wrongfully accused of being witches and tortured to death because of it but the fact that there's no memorial in her town to commemorate these women that suffered so Addy takes it upon herself to campaign to erect a memorial for these women. Being a juvenile fiction novel this book is not exactly targeted towards readers of my age group but despite that I thought this book was fantastic. I even remember rating it five stars so that should tell you how much I enjoyed this book. I thought the execution, the craft, the pacing, the setting, the characterization of this novel was perfectly executed, could not fault it. I also thought it was very informative in terms of helping readers, neurotypical readers, understand um, the basics of autism without compromising on the storytelling. And we have the fact that Addy is such a lovable protagonist. She's determined, she's fighting for a feminist cause. So we can't not support that, right? Um, so yes, there were so many things in this book that made me so happy. I loved the ending. I would only point out trigger warnings for certain slurs that are used. But apart from that, it was a fantastic book and I definitely would recommend it. And now we are switching into X-rated gears with this last one, and that is A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. So this book is a mature erotic fiction novel. It's the first in a three-part series, and it's set in this small English town called Ravenswood, where honestly, the only black people are our main character and her family. 
But in any case, we have our main character, Ruth, who is a black autistic woman. She loves her comic books. And one day she meets this guy called Evan, who's gorgeous and all the rest of it. He is an ex-military man turned smithy i believe he works in some sort of manual labor and what happens is a typical enemies to lovers romance ensues but also there is a mystery attached to ruth and her past which evan is slowly learning about so overall i really enjoyed this book i thought the eroticism was on point which is what we all came here for let's be honest but as well as that everything else about the story came together well it wasn't just about the eroticism there was some really good character development in there even though at times it might have felt a bit contrived but altogether it really did come together and i enjoyed reading it i also thought the autism rep in this book was brilliant talia hibbert being autistic herself and we can really see from ruth's character that yes she does understand and process things differently to certain neurotypicals such as evan the main love interest but that doesn't mean that she has an impairment of some sort or she's challenged in some way and she can still lead a very sexy fulfilling life and finally, finally, I just want to end off this list by sharing with you one honourable mention and that is The Reason I Jump by Naoki Higashida, which is a very short memoir which was translated from the original Japanese and it was written by a non-verbal autistic man who at the time of writing this memoir was only 13 years old. Naoki Higashida has since gone on to write several other novels and short stories using this alphabet grid which is also his primary means of communication and I really wanted to mention this memoir here in this video because non-verbal autistic voices are heavily suppressed not just in fiction but in other circles and spaces as well so I thought it was important to speak about this book despite its many issues and one of the main issues with this memoir is the fact that it does overgeneralize and homogenize the autistic experience which is something that will rub a lot of readers up the wrong way but that aside it does make some really interesting observations and I really appreciated having this perspective of someone who's non-verbal who struggles to communicate something that neurotypicals and some autistic people take for granted on a daily basis not having that ability to communicate um, that was uh, something that I really appreciated from this book and I would recommend it on that basis if you can get past the very homogenizing language and with that said we have now reached the end of this video but before you go there are some links in the description box down below that i would strongly suggest you check out i've included some resources and also some other videos on youtube that i've seen that i thought were really helpful also don't forget to let me know if you've read any of the books featured in today's video what did you think let me know your thoughts don't forget to give me a big thumbs up before you leave and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content if you're new. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time and goodbye.